Hi, welcome to the Ecamm channel again. Today we will talk about how the solvent will influence the charging process in a 2D transition metal carbide maxing. So maxing is a large family of 2D transition metal carbide nitride or carbon nitride material. A single layer of maxing is only a few atoms thick with a conductive carbide core and a redox active metal oxide hydroxide surface. Maxine have a very high conductivity of up to 18,000 siemens per centimeter. So when using Maxine in a supercapacitor, especially in the sulfuric acid electrolyte, the Maxine supercapacitor shows very high capacitance due to the surface redox reactions between the intercalated proton and the surface oxygen. In aqueous electrolyte, Maxine is able to deliver a capacitance of up to 1500 thrust per cubic centimeter. However, the voltage window is relatively narrow. In order to expand the voltage window, organic electrolyte can be used. The problem is, in organic electrolyte, Maxine always shows a relatively low capacitance. So in the bulk electrolyte, we know that if we have one molar listen TFSI in ester nitrile, we will have much higher ionic conductivity than DMSO and PC, and indeed acetonitrile is the most commonly used electrolyte in carbon supercapacitor. However, for 2D transition metal carbide, Maxine shows unexpected result. Shown as the blue color line on the CV curve, acetonitrile system shows no clear redox reactions and lowest capacitance. By using DMSO solvents, shows clear redox peaks on the CV. Surprisingly, for propylene carbonate PC, it shows strong redox peaks with almost two times of capacitance compared to the acetonitrile and DMSO system. So it's very interesting to observe that by simply changing the solvents, the electrochemical behavior is totally different. To understand the differences of electrochemical behavior is three solvents. So we first performed the in-situ XRD. The 002 peak of the maxing, which reflecting the interlayer space of the maxing, is recorded during charge and discharge. Three complete cycles are recorded to show the process is reversible. For dimethyl sulfoxide, the interlayer space is around 19 Armstrong. The interlayer space increases first, then decreases during charge. For isonitrile, the interlayer space changes near 13 Armstrong, smaller than the MSO system. The interlayer space is the largest at the discharge state and becomes smaller at the charge state. For propylene carbonate system, the interlayer space stays constant during the charge and discharge process. More interestingly, the interlayer space is constant at 10.7 Armstrong, which is similar to the pristine maxing. So we take the space parameter from the in-situ XRD and perform the molecular dynamic simulation to reveal the ion solvent structure in between maxing layer. In dimethyl sulfoxide DMSO system, there are 0.46 lithium ion per Ti3C2 unit. Lithium ions are attached to the surface of maxing to store charges. As the interlayer space is large, the interlayer space allows two layers of solvent molecule. Solvent molecules orientated to interact with lithium ion. The missile group on the DMSO points away from the surface and form a hydrophobic environment in between two layers of solvent. The environment allows fast ion transport. This explains the low ion transport resistance of the DMSO system. In the acetonitrile, only 0.37 lithium is presented per TR3C2 unit. Due to smaller interlay space, only one layer of solvents is allowed. So this solvents molecule align parallel to the TR3C2 surface and block the ion transport. This explains the worst performance and the largest resistance in this system. In the case of PC, fully dissolution occurs. With such a small interlayer space, no solvents is allowed in between the layer. Fully dissolution allows dense packing of lithium ion in between maxing layers, and hence almost two times of charge can be stored in TI3C2 compared to other two systems. We would like to have experimental observation to confirm the confinement of each solvent. So we perform the costly elastic neutron backscattering, which is ideal to look at the hydrated species. Comparing the neutron backscattering probe 
there is a clear difference between the bulk electrolyte and at the charge state in mixing. The phase transformation that observed in the bulk electrolyte vanished in the charged electrode, suggesting the confinement of DMSO and estonitrile in the mixing. Especially for estonitrile system, the vibration of the missile group also suppressed with the electrode agrees well with the compact stacking of estonitrile in between the mixing layer. For propylene carbonate, there is almost no change for bulk electrolyte and in electrode. If PC is confined in the mixing, such a small interlayer space would lead to the largest confinement. But based on the mean square distribution deviation, the confinement of PC is much lower than the estonitrile in mixing. This further suggests the absence of PC in between the layer. This study demonstrates that new electrochemical material system require different approaches to find matching electrolyte to achieve high performance. We cannot just consider ion electrode, ion solvent, solvent electrode interaction. There is an interplay between all active components that needs investigation. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.